The Nigerian Medical Association has kicked against the federal government's decision to ease lockdown in Lagos, Ogun and the Federal Capital Territory effective May the 4th, describing it as premature. President Muhammad Buhari in a state broadcast on Monday had announced the phased and gradual easing of the about five-week lockdown in three places. But in a statement signed by NME President Dr. Francis Faduile in Abuja on Friday night, the association said the timing for the federal government's decision was not right because the nation was still battling with inadequate personal protective equipment for health workers, lack of enough bed spaces in the state for infected people, and rising infections across the country, among others. Now joining us live via telephone is legal practitioner Barista Bath Naji. Good afternoon, Barista Naji. Good afternoon. I'm sure you're following the story of, um, you know, uh, easing the lockdown by Monday. We'll all return to normal, as it were. Uh, what's your thought on, you know, coming back to work and resuming everything as it used to be? Okay, listening to the question. Okay, can you hear me? I should go. Then, yes, yes, I, I heard you. And okay. um, talking about uh, the lockdown, Hello? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Very well. Um, I think everybody is looking forward to being released, uh, literally, on Monday, mm -hmm. uh, having been locked down, particularly in Lagos, for almost uh, five weeks now. Right. But that should not remove the personal responsibility of uh, individuals taking care of uh, their own safety by making sure that they exercise the protocols that have been established for maybe avoiding the spread or uh, uh, contracting the, the virus. Mm. For example, social distancing, wearing the, the nose uh, guards, otherwise known as social mask, and uh, ensuring that um, you don't go out where you don't need to go out. This is no longer the time for mere frivolities. And then on the part of uh, the NCDC to reduce creating so much anxiety because the way they report that uh, this thing is only escalating without explaining why people are being discharged without giving them any serious treatment since there's no much uh, treatment for now. That you should emphasize the more positive side and don't create too much anxiety uh, because uh, in a frenetic situation, people make mistakes. For example, if you want to protect a very prized teacup, you may end up in, inadvertently breaking it yourself. Hmm. Now, having, ha having said that, the NMA, for instance, who you would say they know where it hurts because most of the, all doctors are really in the front line now, so to speak. They are the ones who come in contact with uh, uh, sick patients. They are the ones, basically, among others, uh, other essential workers. But NMA is saying that it's, it's premature for you know, the federal government to take the decision to go back to work starting from Monday, 4th of May. What's your thoughts on that? Do you agree or you share a different opinion? Quite frankly, my, my opinion, uh, which uh, I also expressed in my uh, uh, Facebook uh, page, is that this is a case of delicate balancing. Mm. Hello? Yeah. Are you with me? Yes, yes, please go ahead. It's a case of delicate balancing. Uh, when you are caught between the, the devil and uh, the deep uh, blue sea, yes. and you need to survive, you have to look for a middle course for escape. Is it better to leave people at their homes to die of starvation even when the virus may never have uh, had the opportunity of getting to them, even ultimately? Or do we uh, stay outside and pursue our legitimate earnings and uh, perhaps expose people to the, the virus? So a middle course is required whereby we, like I used to say, you ventilate the system, mm -hmm. okay? The government seems to have taken some steps. So I don't think the NMA should insist that everybody should stay home completely and die in, the, in, the, in, in, in their private uh, homes when there is no palliative. All the copy and paste that we were doing cannot work because in other times where we say uh, the lockdown is, uh, is operating, 
you can see that their system is efficient, so they are able to reach out to the to the real people that require uh, palliatives. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, if we, as they insist here, they say the poorest of the poor. Who is the poorest of the poor? If you have ten million dollars in the bank and you don't have access to it, you can still die of starvation. And so you are poorest of the poor in that material situation. So new poor people have been created by the lockdown. And then the poorest of the poor may have been receiving some palliatives in a marginal way mm -hmm. to even be better than the new poor. So it's a very serious issue that we have to look at. And I'm happy that government seems to be uh, addressing that. And like I said, I want that it will not be good for the sovereign to make an order that cannot be enforced. There are certain laws, if you make certain laws that do not accord with the people's uh, situation, it can't be obeyed. And it will be very wrong if uh, the polity, I mean, the sovereign, makes rules or laws or make an order that cannot be enforced. You could see that uh, towards the end of this uh, period, people were already pouring in the street. Uh -huh. So how many people are you going to jail or convict? So I think it is better that we have a ventilation and then allow people a certain degree of uh, personal responsibility. If you drive the process through personal responsibility and some marginal leverage from government, it makes it easy for all the parties. But, but, but again, there's the argument that because the, the, we've moved from, from where we are to a stage of community transmission, uh, like you earlier mentioned that before now, people are already pouring into the streets. How are we going to manage that situation where people understand the seriousness of this and then show a level of collective responsibility for our collective good? You see, you know, the issue is very, very, very delicate. Like I said, it's a balancing act. Is it better to starve and die in the room? And you know so many people were already dying, or at least being denatured by hunger. And any subsequent lockdown, complete lockdown, could have escalated this. Now, I am not for, I'm not for a situation where people recklessly go and contract the disease. The community uh, transmission we are talking about, the way we live is communal. So if the people living in a communal environment are to be completely locked down on account of the prospect of them being the, 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 the vehicle through which the um, transmission can be done at a higher velocity, then government should identify those areas of high risk and send palliatives in a massive form to keep them at bay. And then those people that can operate in fairly isolated environments to ensure that the economy does not completely collapse so that they will be able to sustain the palliatives that are subsequently being given to these areas going forward, government should do that. That is why I've always insisted that people in government should be those who are good at critical thinking. We do not have to be doing copy and paste. Do things that will solve problems in their own jurisdiction. Even if you are copying, don't paste. Mm -hmm. Mediate in your own thinking and see how to uh, maybe adjust it, make it fit for purpose. Mm -hmm. You don't go buying jeans, trousers, and distributing it to those who may not want to wear it just because you say you have a trouser. Let right. me just, you have to shape it. All right. Uh, Dr. Barista Chima Naji, rather, thank you so very much for your time. Uh, hopefully, our uh, government will learn to copy and not necessarily to paste. Please do stay exactly. safe where you are. It's very important. <laughs>